Okay, so this is uh, Birchall High School. This is a podcast for OCR GCSEPE. Uh, in a series of podcasts, remember, if you're watching this off YouTube, um, there won't be anything to watch. It's an audio podcast, so um, it's more about listening. Um, just another way of revising, taking things in. We're going to look at health, fitness and well-being section of the course, which is paper two. Uh, we're going to look at the key definitions for health, fitness and well-being. We're going to look at uh, what constitutes a healthy, balanced lifestyle. And then we're going to look at... Um, benefits and consequences uh, of taking part in physical activity so what are the benefits of taking part physical mental and social and what are the consequences if you leave a sedentary lifestyle as in you are not doing any exercise um, two of us here today she'll hear myself uh, and mrs crowley um, so the first one we'll look at is health fitness and well-being there are three definitions that you need to know uh, for the exam and actually in the exam if, the, if it does say the word defined you are going to have to give a pretty accurate definition you can't just make your own version up it's got to be a uh, pretty much a standard definition so we'll start miss with you with this one with health please okay so the definition of health is a state of complete physical mental and social well-being not just the absence of disease or infirmity okay so just to expand on that a little bit more if you imagine you could have someone who in terms of um, they could look physically fit, they could be in terms of physical fitness is fantastic, but they could have um, depression or they could have a stress related illness or anxiety, which would mean you couldn't call them healthy because they have to be completely physically, mentally and socially um, fit. So again, we have people like Paul Gascoigne in the past, famous England footballer who physically was fit, had lots of friends around him, but mentally struggled, um, had various mental health issues, so therefore he couldn't be considered healthy. And if any one of those three, physical, social or mental, uh, is not considered good, then you wouldn't be considered healthy. You have to be all three, physical, social and mental well-being. Next one is fitness, which is, definition is a person's capacity to carry out life activities without getting too tired, and for the body's ability, or the body ability to function efficiently and effectively so again can you complete tasks can you do tasks without getting too tired um would would represent your fitness level and the third definition you'd need to know is well-being so the definition of well-being is the feeling or mental state of being contented happy prosperous and healthy Okay, notice this one doesn't mention physical in any way. Well-being is to do with a mental state, say content, happy, etc. So making sure that you feel good about yourself, and that will probably link to lots of other areas, um, self-esteem and self-confidence and things like that, but a feeling, a mental state of being contented and happy, uh, prosperous and healthy. So that would, con they are three definitions that you just need to know. Um, a question that's come out more and more in the last few years has been about healthy balanced lifestyles and they often, they often link it to another area of the course you might say how does a diet contribute to a healthy balanced lifestyle how does exercise contribute to a healthy balanced lifestyle but to answer that question effectively you need to know what a healthy balanced lifestyle is um so a healthy balanced lifestyle is a combination of things so it's Number one would be having a healthy, balanced diet. And in the other podcast on diet, you should know what constitutes a healthy and balanced diet. Um, you know, correct amount of each food group and not too much fat in your diet, not too much alcohol, etc. in your diet. And the second one would be regular exercise to maintain muscular strength, muscular endurance, cardiovascular fitness, etc. The third one would be maintaining a body, a healthy body weight. So if you are massively overweight, there's the bell going. Um, you would not be considered to have a healthy, balanced lifestyle because either your diet is out or your level of exercise isn't burning off that amount of ex uh, excess calories. Uh, not smoking or drinking excessively. We all know the effects of smoking in terms of lungs, alveoli, oxygen uh, carrying capacity, etc. So you must not be drinking alcohol excessively, uh, sorry, smoking excessively or drinking alcohol excessively, which would also cause obesity in the alcohol case. Uh, Minimising stress, which would relate to the mental well-being and having positive relationships which would relate to social well-being. To have a healthy, balanced lifestyle, you have to eat well, drink, drink well, exercise correctly, minimise your stress, and have good uh, social relationships around you. And if you do all those things, then you could be considered to having a healthy, balanced lifestyle. Okay, we'll move on to the section of the course that, um, again, this it's been quite fashionable, this one in recent years, to ask about physical, mental, uh, and social issues to do with 
um, taking part in activity. And there's sort of two sections to this. There's benefits of taking part. So how would you benefit in a particular area if you take part? And then there's always also the consequences of not doing those things. So what are the consequences of not doing any exercise or not not taking part in any sport? What would actually happen to you? So the first part is uh, Miss will talk about, but it's going to be about benefits of the physical so if I take part in sport, what are the physical benefits? How will my body actually benefit? There's probably lots of them, but there's key ones you need to know. So benefits, Miss. Okay, so the first uh, main one then for benefits of physical activity is prevention of injury. So, for example, by increasing range of flexibility and stability of the joints. So your range of movement is going to increase at the joints and also your ligaments and tendons at the joints as well become stronger and therefore the stability of the joint becomes uh, becomes better, becomes more uh, well, stronger. I think it, it, the other side of that, if you're opposite, so a consequence of not doing activity then would be would an, an increased risk of injury. It would just be the opposite, really. So taking part and being fit would mean you've got less chance of getting injured. Being sedentary means that you're probably going to increase your chance of injury. And, and I think if you've been out or you've been injured for a while, your body does get more fragile. You've got to build your, build your fitness back up before you feel um, fully, fully fit and fully strong. So consequence of not taking part physically is that you increase your risk of injury benefit miss okay so the next one then is that it would decrease the risk of coronary heart disease or chd that it can be abbreviated to always remember though in the exam um be aware of abbreviating words make sure you write out the full thing um yeah. so if you're going to put chd make sure that you've clearly put beforehand coronary heart disease so that the examiner knows exactly what you're referring to I think, you know I think by the way if that's, a, if that's a six mark question or is a longer question the first time you write it you write the full thing so if you write if you got to refer to coronary heart disease the first time you wrote it in your text you would have to write coronary heart disease the next then you would bracket chd afterwards but then afterwards you can then go chd but if you never put the full term you're not going to get the marks Okay, so we've got decreased risk of coronary heart disease is the first one and also decreased um, risk of high blood pressure. So, for example, you're decreasing the, the amount of blood, uh, sorry, amount of fats in the blood, increasing blood flow and also increasing circulation around the body. Okay, and again, completely the opposite of that, a physical consequence of not taking part uh, in physical activity would be you increase your risk of coronary heart disease. You are more likely to get heart um, higher blood pressure because you're struggling to remove the fats you're not working the body you're not working the heart on a regular basis so your chance of coronary heart disease would increase back to a benefit miss okay so this time we've got increasing and maintaining bone density so for example stimulating new bone growth so you can withstand more stress um, on the skeletal system so particularly when we're talking about high impact activities oh, yeah, and plyometric training that type of thing um, the body gets much better at withstanding the stress on the skeleton in these types of activities as a result of regular exercise and again always the opposite the consequence physically of not exercising would be a low bone density so if your bone becomes less dense you're more likely to get injuries you're more likely to get fractures um you won't get that extra bone growth and renewal from doing exercise on a regular basis weight bearing exercise helps your bones become stronger so if you don't exercise your bone density will reduce and you will increase the chance of injury Okay, back to benefits then. So uh, a good one here. So prevents obesity and limits type 2 diabetes. We know type 2 diabetes um, more often than not can come as a result of being overweight uh, and physically unfit. So for example, body fat and blood sugars um, are used when we're exercising and it's those things, fat and sugars, which leads to those conditions. That's fairly common sense, that one as well, isn't it? You are going to put weight on if you don't exercise. Calories in, you don't burn them off. You're going to put weight on, so you're... Um, your fat level in your body would rise. So as a consequence of not doing exercise, a sedentary lifestyle, you will have an increased chance of obesity, uh, an increased type of uh, chance of type 2 diabetes. But all the things that go with that, so low energy levels, um, inability for the heart and the respiratory system to work effectively, all those things as a consequence, which would lead to diabetes, possibly, and obesity. And the last benefit, Miss. Okay, last one. So increases your fitness and also helps you to maintain good posture. So, for example, increases your energy levels and also strengthens core muscles to prevent lower back pain. And I think um, in addition to that as well, self-esteem and self-confidence yeah, comes into that because yeah. posture definitely uh, links into those reasons too. So we've given, you, we've given you five benefits there. There are actually more than that. So, I mean, 
obviously this section is all about physical benefits so you could say um, something about increasing lung capacity or development of tidal volumes you could take bigger breaths etc or bigger stroke volume all things you've talked about you know long uh, long term benefits of it of exercise in other areas of the course so just you know th there are obvious ones but you should be able to use your other knowledge from other areas of the course to give more physical benefits and your consequences are always opposite so you know miss talked about increase in fitness you're gonna get if you don't exercise you're gonna get a decrease in fitness and your posture could suffer and again that could lead to lower back pain and you tend to if your posture's out you'll tend to get injuries in other areas of your body as well so um just think of the opposite really but one will benefit one will have a consequence if you don't do it so there are the physical ones but there are more than the ones we've just said and again try and use knowledge from other areas of the course you know, nothing complicated think of things you've done think of death things you've defined and how they would improve the second section is about uh, mental benefits or mental consequences so this is sometimes called emotional on the exam you would get the marks for either to our benefits and consequences in terms of mentally emotionally from taking part or not taking part in physical activity benefits miss you get the positive ones okay so <clears> first um, emotional benefit or mental benefit of physical activity is that it increases self-esteem and confidence so for example when you exercise your body releases something called endorphins which is a type of hormone it's like our happy hormone that elevates mood and increases life skills to experience success and achieve your goals and again well. it's fairly obvious that one if you exercise you feel good about yourself and I don't think any of us could possibly deny that you'll get the physical benefits then you'll figure the mental benefits that you actually feel good and you increase your self-esteem and confidence and always a good thing obviously as a consequence of that we'll just reverse it if you don't exercise on a regular basis so you don't get any of those benefits you will get a decrease in self-esteem and confidence and normally caused by poor body image so you might get someone who doesn't exercise but they're putting on weight don't feel good about themselves look in the mirror don't like what they see they're going to get poor self-esteem they're going to get poor confidence not feeling confidence talking to other people there's lots of knock-ons of that of those mental emotional issues so you'll get a decrease in self-esteem and confidence if you do not exercise on a regular basis Okay, next one then, another benefit is that it's a really good way of managing stress levels. So, for example, stress can be relieved through exercise and the release of endorphins in the body. So, particularly for you guys at the moment studying for your exams, yep. some of you are currently going through exams as well, you'll be feeling that stress from around school, no doubt. Exercising is a really good way of managing that stress because of the release of those hormones. And, and then, you know, you, you know, a P staff, we tend to do that as well, so... And you get home and you've got more work to do when you get home or marking to do so you go out for a run and it just you know, stress buster for half an hour of time where you, you've got a bit of time to yourself and you feel good about yourself and um, just calms you down a little bit obviously the opposite of that is that no exercise can lead to uh, poor management of stress and an increase in stress because how do you release that stress if you're always continuing to do the same thing so by doing some exercise you can relieve stress but by not doing exercise you can actually increase your stress levels okay final one then is that it promotes much more of a, a positive body image for yourself uh, so for example if you're feeling happy within yourself and happy with your physique that in turn then helps to raise self-esteem and self-confidence you should see how those bits have linked together really because the first point miss made was about self-esteem and confidence and then this bo positive body image is also um talking about raising your self-esteem but feeling good about yourself and the way you look will definitely uh, raise your confidence levels a consequence of that is obviously the opposite a negative body image so if you're not exercising on a regular basis or you're putting on weight or you're not feeling good about yourself uh, you're gonna have negative feelings um, which can decrease your self-esteem and confidence and make you feel miserable um, so these are all so uh, mental uh, or emotional issues of exercising and obviously consequences of not exercising so we've dealt with physical we've dealt with emotional mental and we're now going to deal with social Okay, so the first benefit then of social issues is that it helps to increase friendship groups. So, for example, it gives you the opportunity to meet new people, share experiences and work cooperatively with other people. So, unfortunately, in today's society, there are a lot of people who suffer from loneliness. So getting out there, getting involved in a team, going to a gym, being part of an exercise group or exercise class really helps to establish these new friendships. And as a result, helps you to be socially more active and more healthy as a result. And again, that can be at any level because I mean people always have often asked me about this one they always seem to write when we get questions about this one about this social benefit they always write about teams it doesn't have to be in a team it could be playing against someone in a friendly way it could be joining a squad that train together it could be 
um, any element where you are working with people. It could be working with a coach or a physio where you're meeting people, you're talking, you're working cooperatively together. Obviously, a team is more likely because you're working with lots more people, but that friendship group in any in any way, any way when you're working with people, as long as it's not on your own, it can benefit. Obviously, the opposite of that, again, is a small friendship group, so lack of social interaction or opportunities to meet people and make friends. It's fairly simple. If you don't do exercise, you are cutting off one of your avenues to doing that. So that leads really nicely now into the next one, which is increasing your sense of belonging. So feeling a part of a team or part of a group. I know when I play with my netball team, you know, more often than not on a Tuesday night, I'll be thinking, oh, the last thing I want to do now is go out and play netball in the freezing cold. And it's that team spirit, knowing that I'm going to see my friends, um, you know, see the team and have a really good night playing netball with them and also catching up with friends is what gets me out the door and gets me playing. So that's a really important one. Okay, and again, the consequences of not, Obviously, doing get involved in physical activity is that it, it, you, you can can feel isolated because it's a, you're taking away one of these avenues of meeting people and not feeling part of a community. So, again, it's a great way of meeting people, playing sports, a great way of getting involved with people and making friends. So, if you don't do that, then obviously you can be more isolated. We're not saying this is the only way to do that. Of course, people can join other things, other hobbies, or other interests. But sports are a fantastic way of doing that. Okay, last one. Okay, last one then is that it helps you to become more socially active. So it increases the number of opportunities for you to be involved in things like social gatherings, occasions, interactions with other celebrations, that sort of thing. So parties, yeah, parties, awards evenings, yeah, all that. Um, you know, end even of team season team things. meetings and things like yeah. that are all part of that. Yeah, aren't? definitely. So obviously, the opposite of that is is again this social isolation thing. So you haven't got the opportunities for socially activities go into these gatherings so loneliness would be the, would be the consequence of that um and it has become it's become a much more prevalent thing uh, people feeling more lonely and actually social media is a big part to play in that where people only communicate electronically and not in real life and have those conversations and um you know get support off people so loneliness would be the consequence of a sedentary lifestyle again we will state again we are not saying that sport is the only way to do this but it is a very very big one so we've covered physical uh, benefits and consequences we found we've covered social benefits and consequences and we've covered mental stroke emotional uh, benefits and consequences I think the last thing to say is before we finish this one is that you could link them all together so a question could ask you to do that. If it asks you about one, write about one. But you could say that, that if you're taking part in sport, you're going to have an increased chance to meet new people uh, and share experiences and work together, which is a social benefit. As a consequence of that, if you've got a social benefit, you might get some mental benefits because you feel better about yourself because you've got more people around you to support you. You might, of course, get some physical benefits because by playing that sport, you get fitter and more healthy, you reduce your weight, then you feel better about yourself because you look better and your self-confidence improves, which relates back to mental, emotional. So all these things can link together. And obviously, you don't get one benefit in isolation or one consequence in isolation. So you can link these parts of the course together and possibly other parts as well because obviously, if you're talking about losing weight as well as exercise, you could include your diet which we talked about from um healthy balanced lifestyle before there are more than the ones we've said but they are the key ones and obviously if you can discuss those at length and it could easily well be a six mark question now exam we don't know this obviously but it tends to be an extended one that's all i would say it could be a three mark a four mark question it could even be a six but that extended writing and can we just state again if you do get a question that's three four five six marks write in full sentences just like you would write in an english exam it's no different you don't bullet point you write in sentences full paragraphs etc with good spelling punctuation and grammar all those things would be absolutely key to getting more marks in our exam so this has been a podcast on health fitness and well-being we'll state again it's for paper two on our course our second exam on socio cultural factors um, and this is part of a series that we're putting on YouTube, so go and listen to another one, um, just another way of revising for you.